Hey everybody, welcome back to California Carnivores. It's about mid-February here in the greenhouse and we're starting to get some warm spring days out here in California and we're starting to see some growth happen on our temperate plants. I was just checking out this big bowl of purple pitcher plants and looking at doing some cleanup for the spring. Believe it or not, I planted the seeds for these purple pitcher plants when I was 14 years old. I'm 43 now. Sadly, that was almost 30 years ago. And I still have these guys to this day. My parents wanted me to, cro wanted me to start growing plants in order to compete with California carnivores, uh, and I never wanted to do that. So I just filled my greenhouse up with giant purple pitcher plants that I grew from seed, and then I ended up keeping them all. Um, and they're still here. So, um, obviously I'm qualified to take care of purple pitcher plants, but I thought I'd share some of my years of expertise and give you some bravery when it comes to cutting these back. So, just like a regular American pitcher plant, these guys do have a rhizome. There's not a whole lot of space in between their growth points, so it can be very like tight in there. And because they're more rosetted than upright, it can be kind of hard to know where to get started in here. You can see this is a growth point that I've already started to cut back. And you can cut every single pitcher off of here. I have every single year for 30 years. And you'll see people online who say, oh my God, never ever cut all the pitchers off. They'll die or I don't know what. But you absolutely can. Um, if you have a lot more spare time than I do, you could leave one or two of these nice looking pitchers on there per growth point and then cut that off when the other ones, when the new ones come up. But I honestly don't have that kind of time. I have too many plants. And so I'll pretty much cut them all off. And I do that because when the new pitchers start to form, they'll need a place to be. And if you leave all these on there, the new pitchers are gonna have to come up squished between all these old pitchers and they'll be deformed. You can see like this one here is a later pitcher that came up later in the year and it's all squished back and forth because it had to come up in between all those older pitchers. So then in the spring, what will happen is you'll end up with all these kind of mutated squished new pitchers. And then, you know, usually by like April, all these nice looking old pitchers from last year are all gonna turn brown. So you'll be left with crummy looking brown old pitchers and squished up new pitchers. So nobody wants that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this whole thing back. If you're growing your purple pitcher plant outside, which probably you should be, you might wait another couple of weeks for this. The best time to do this is in the spring after your, um, there's no danger of nighttime freezes. Obviously purple pitcher plants are incredibly hardy, but the new foliage, the flower buds, and the new pitchers, the soft ones, they are not. And if they catch a freeze, they'll burn back. It won't kill the plant, but you'll lose that first flush of growth, which is often the nicest. I've got my work cut out for me here, so I'm just gonna finish it up, but I hope that helps. 